we come now to the great wide northwest as the series resumes in the land of tall firs and the winding Willamette River. Outwardly, the change in atmosphere is apparent. And consider the drastic change in the atmosphere of the series itself and how on the thinnest of margins these things can turn. What if Michael Jordan makes the last shot of regulation Friday night? Well then, it's 2-0 Chicago, and maybe the Blazers are just coming home to die. But he didn't, and the Blazers won by displaying the very qualities they allegedly lacked. Resourcefulness, poise, and clutch play in the absence of their star. While it was the defending champs who committed the untimely errors of judgment and performance. Are the Bulls still thinking of the Jordan technical that started the unraveling? When Danny Ainge enters the game, will it bring flashbacks of the way the veteran led the unlikely comeback from 10 down with four and a half left? In Terry Porter, will Chicago see the three-pointer that finished them in overtime and quieted their long flight to Portland? Yes, the atmosphere has changed, and now Portland is poised to seize control of a series they were nearly counted out of. For Chicago, this could be a hard week of playing uphill against Blazer Mania with Pippen hurting, Cartwright showing his age, and even Jordan overloaded. This is the latest and sternest challenge for the world champion, Chicago Bulls. Bulls and the Portland Trail Blazers. All of Portland is in the throes of Blazer mania, a condition first diagnosed in 1977 when the franchise won its first and to date only NBA championship. Fifteen years later, the fever still rages. This is part of the crowd that greeted them in the wee hours of Saturday morning when they returned home after the series evening victory in game two in Chicago. It seems as if this entire town is caught up in this series, but only 12,884 are lucky enough to have seats in the NBA's smallest, and many would say loudest, arena. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Costas. Welcome to Game 3. After Friday's stirring come-from-behind overtime win, Portland has achieved what most experts said they needed to, split the first two in Chicago and come home even. The Blazers are 8-0 in the playoffs in this building. Of course, the Blazers and their fans remember the last time they made the finals. That was two years ago. Then they managed to split in Detroit against the defending champion Pistons. In fact, the game they won there was an overtime victory, just like their win in Chicago. And so they returned on a high to Memorial Coliseum, where they were 9-0 to that point in that postseason. But the Pistons proceeded to win all three here and closed down the series in five. Following Friday's victory, Buck Williams and Terry Porter reminded their teammates of that. There's also a worrisome statistical trend at work. The Western Conference champs, whoever they may have been, have lost eight consecutive home games in the finals. The Lakers lost the last two in the forum to the Pistons in 89 as they were swept. The Blazers lost the three we talked about to the Pistons in 90. And last June, the Lakers lost three at home as the Bulls won the title. There are reasons, though, to like the Blazers' chances of breaking that streak. And to explain, here are the guys who will call the game, Marv Albert and Mike Fratello. Marvelous. All right, Bob, and the Bulls are still trying to figure out how they let Friday night's game slip away. They led by 10 with about four and a half minutes to play. But Mike, as Phil Jackson told us last night, he thought that he had a tired ball club on his hands in the fourth quarter. Bob, there's no question. Fatigue was a factor affecting the Chicago Bulls. Outscored 33 to 12 down the stretch and 18 to 7 in overtime. One player affected by the fatigue was John Paxson, who played 42 minutes during the regular season. He averages just 25 minutes a game. Paxson told me yesterday my legs were shot. John had an opportunity to knock out a couple big jumpers in regulation time, but came up short on each one. Michael Jordan, four for ten in regulation and overtime, had a chance to win it in the end of regulation, but he missed badly. 
Jordan also affected when the concentration was broken due to fatigue. The Bulls defense affected by the fatigue factor. A, a slow, late rotation of Duckworth enabled Kevin to knock out the tying jumper in regulation, and then a number of easy scores, which usually doesn't happen against the Chicago Bulls defense. So fatigue reared its head in a number of different ways in game two. And with Portland winning in Chicago, it has now come down to what amounts to a best of five series, and it's an unusual best of five configuration. Well, unusual in so far as these next three games are all at home for Portland Air Building, and then if needed, back to Chicago for two games. We need to go back to 1985. That's when the format was changed. It used to be two games at home, two games away, then 1-1-1 one, one, one for the team that had four games in their favor, which is Chicago right now. But with this new format of 2-3-2, two, two, most coaches feel this really favors the team with the four games in their building because they feel it's just so hard to win three straight in the same building during the finals. As far as Portland's concerned, obviously, they would rather not go back to Chicago. And we are minutes away, closing in on game three of this best of seven NBA championship series. Back with the introduction of the lineups in a moment. I remember it well. I just come out of some of the most rugged country of Utah when I turned 200,000 miles on my truck. I was way back in the woods. It's rugged. It's at the base of Chestnut Mountain. A lot of people won't go there, but it's a special place to me. I pulled over the side of the road, showed a sign saying 200,000 miles. Is that cool or what? Where were you when your Toyota truck hit 100, 200, or 300,000 miles? Call us and tell us your story. The only truck I'll ever own be a Toyota. I'll tell you that much right now. Barcelona. Twelve of our best men will be bound by a common past, a common goal, and a common thread. Champion is proud to have been chosen to make the uniform for America's team. Because we understand, too, it takes a little more to make a champion. Where do you want to be next year? We've decided uh, that we want to adopt. And we're planning to live on one income. We never decided not to have kids. It's just that the, uh, the timing never seems right. Can we set up our portfolio so that I, I can, can stay, stay home, home with, with the, the baby? baby? You can get there from here with Shearson Lehman Brothers. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Toyota, reminding you to always buckle up. Do it for those who love you. By cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Lite, taking the country by storm. And by AT&T, the right choice. Portland, Oregon, the city of roses on a 73-degree day, and basketball very much in the air. For the introduction of the lineups, we join Mike Stone on the public address. And now, Portland, Oregon, site of the 1992 NBA Draft and the Olympic Qualifying Basketball Tournament, the Tournament of the Americas. Here are the starting lineups for Game 3 of the NBA Finals. First, for the visiting Chicago Bulls. Starting at one forward out of Central Arkansas, 6'7", number 33, Scotty Pippen. At forward from Clemson, 6'10", number 54, Horace Grant. At center, 7'1", from San Francisco, number 24, Bill Cartwright. Out of Notre Dame, at guard, 6'2", number 5, John Paxson. And at guard from North Carolina, 6'6", number 23, Michael Jordan. The head coach of the Chicago Bulls, Phil Jackson. Bob Williams at center, 
from Eastern Illinois, seven foot double O, the Duck, Kevin Duckworth. And one guard from Wisconsin, Stevens, point six three, leader of the pack, number 30, Terry Porter. And at guard from Houston, six seven, number 22. to a man who is enjoying a homecoming in this area as a one-time star running back at the University of Oregon Ducks. Let's go to Amon Rashad. Amon? Marv, that is the University of Oregon Fighting Ducks. Now, once again, I've visited both locker rooms. In the Portland locker room, a very loose atmosphere. Clyde Drexler told me we accomplished what we wanted to in Chicago by getting one game, and we have no plans on going back to Chicago. On the other side, in the Chicago locker room, a lot of concern. These players were very, very much concerned over the loss that they had in game two. Uh, Coach Bill Jackson told me that in the last two years, that was probably the toughest loss that they have ever had, and they hopefully they can bounce back from that and play well again today. One other note, Marv, is a lot of people have some concern over Scotty Pippen's wrist by the way he was shooting in game two. I talked to him just before the game. He said the wrist is fine, and he's ready to go. Marv? All right, the fighting duck, former star, Ahmad Rashad. Now, Mike, I, I do want to make the point that they are not using the scoreboard that has been lowered as a screen for jump shots. They will not play the game in this matter. Obviously, there is a malfunction, which is being taken care of. Apparently, the, the horn in the 24-second uh, the clock, which is operated from the scoreboard, not working correctly, so they're working on fixing it and uh, hopefully it will be only a short delay and apparently they have solved the problem. Big hand for Clyde Drexler a moment ago who bounced back with a, a strong game in game two although he sat out the last 936 after going down on fouls and several players and members of the media made the point that the Blazers were actually very effective without Drexler on the floor. They got better ball movement out of it, and we talked about that with Coach Rick Adelman. Well, I'm really happy because uh, they still believe they could win, but I want Clyde on the floor. I'm not going <laughs> to sit here and say, you know, we're a better team without Clyde. I told him the team after the game, we finally got rid of him and we started to roll, uh, but that was joking. Uh, I think it says a lot about our team. Uh, it says a lot about the other guys that they stepped up and they took over. One thing that really helped us, uh, I don't know if you can put as much emphasis on it, is when Clyde was hurt in the latter part of the year, Danny played a lot. And we really got used to playing with him and doing things with Terry and Danny that we don't do with Clyde. They're two different players. So we were able to adjust pretty good with Danny and Terry in the lineup. It happens a number of times during the course of a season where a key player goes out and you're forced to use other people and they learn to play better with one another. A similar question that Chris Ford had to answer up in Boston regarding Larry Bird. Are you better with Larry or without? You want your heavy artillery in there. There's no way they win the games they've won over the past few seasons without Clyde Drexler. It was just happenstance. The players stepped up and produced in Clyde's absence. And Clyde Drexler, 26 points, 8 for 20 from the field, 10 for 10 from the line, and came out in very aggressive fashion. So we're set for game three. Game one, it was Michael Jordan with the record for a finals ball game, 35 points in the first half, 39 at all, and he did it from three-point land as Chicago won convincingly. And then game number two in Chicago, the Bulls with that 10-point lead in the final minutes, not able to hang on despite the fact that Drexler went out on fouls. Danny Ainge with 17 points, nine of the 17 in overtime to help lead the Portland Trailblazers to the victory. Well, the scoreboard has been raised to its proper place, and we are set to go. The officials, Phil Oaks, Ed G. Rush, and Mike Mathis, and the call, Chicago Ball, last touch by Portland. 
Big concern by many people, the Bulls' ability to bounce back after the devastating loss in game number two. Did they have enough time to get themselves straightened out in their heads and immediately go down inside low to Grant, which is one of the things that they like to do in Chicago, establish the inside game with either Cartwright or Grant early. We have a feeling in visiting with Phil Jackson and some of the Bulls yesterday that uh, this was a, a down ball club. Phil mentioned emotionally down, although he tried to remain upbeat. Percy switching off to Jordan here at the start. Here's Pippen. Scotty Pippen, who told him out earlier that the wrist is okay, was backing up on the outside shot the other day, but he went for the outside shot at the start. And the foul called on Chicago to put Percy on the line. It's called on Pippen. If you think back to game two, when Jerome Kersey had been struggling, the play that got him off early was a transition dunk by Kersey, filling the right lane once again. Here, almost an exact similar play. This time, he goes to the free throw line for two opportunities. Jerome Kersey who has battled through injuries to both ankles did not have a good one last Wednesday in game one came back in game two for 12 points and eight rebounds both two and the Blazers won Jordan and Paxson in the backcourt caught right up front with Grant and Pippen Grant with the open shot and Percy with the rebound. Terry Porter had an excellent game in Chicago on Friday. Here's Duckworth who hit that clutch shot down the stretch in regulation. But Williams and it's rebounded by Grant. Cartwright going to work. With his first field goal, and as we have mentioned throughout this series, the Bulls love to get Cartwright involved early. Duckworth getting the position. The steal by Percy. Percy will go back to the line. Committed by Horace Grant. Grant picked up two quick fouls in game number two and eventually had to go to the bench much earlier than Phil Jackson and his staff would have liked. And if, if Jerome Kersey continues to get in the transition game, whether he produces it himself or for steals or as a result of running out after defensive rebounding, this is a big plus for him. We saw him open the game up with a jumper. It was an air ball. That's not his strength. His strength is he's a driving, slashing, offensive rebounding type of player. Percy only a 66% free throw shooter. And he's opened up hitting only one out of four from the line. The Bulls four and the Trailblazers one. John Paxson provided a lift with his outside shooting in Chicago on Friday. And the call being made by Ann Rush against Portland. It's on Buck Williams. This whole mismatch starts with a slice cut by running Grant off of Cartwright. There was a switch by Duckworth that leaves Buck Williams, who is not as big or strong as Duckworth, trying to guard Cartwright. Rexler going to the boards. Handled by Kersey. Porter drew the double team. averaging 18 and a half games in the two previous games against Chicago. He has only five assists, and it's unusual when you think of a point guard having only five assists for two games, but he's one of those guys that kind of falls in the category of he's just a great guard. He can score, he can run the show, he's taken on more scoring responsibilities this season. And he has that excellent change of pace move. He was able to beat the double team, and then he was fouled by Conrad. Open 
jump, but he saw Horace Grant just all alone. The Bulls lead 6-5. trying to deny Jordan, winds up causing the turnover, and then it leads to an easy Clyde score. Upwards prior to this game. It was very nice to see a player who uh, has had a tough season as far as some of the criticism he received. But he's so happy about the big shot he made in game number two to tie it down to six. Here comes Wexler giving it up, but within a whistle, a traveling violation. He gave it up, but he traveled first. Duckworth had mentioned to us that with the game down two points for Portland. Clock winding down with about six seconds remaining. The fact that the team went to him and he was able to produce the big shot just took his confidence level way up. And he just feels so good about it because he wants to be a main contributor. He loves it here in this city. Well, that's what he said. He wanted to uh, correct the perception of the statement the other day. Jordan able to stop for his first field goal. Now, we weren't there when he reportedly said that he wanted out of Portland, but he claims that was not the case. Wexler hits the three. And the Blazers lead by the score of 10-8. This is Duckworth speaking. He said he was asked about the tough time that he has received here in Portland, and, and he said, well, something to the effect, whatever happens, happens. But it did not come out that way. As I say, that's Duckworth's interpretation. Here's Porter with another beautiful move around Sexton. That's the concern that Chicago had when Porter tries to overpower either Paxton or B.J. Armstrong. In game one, it never got to that. It was all outside perimeter shots. There we saw him turn the corner last time. And Pippen was held up by Percy. The crowd responding with a timeout taken. Portland leading 12 to 8. Terry Porter doing it with the crossover. Another strong move. I'm Spike. It's my house. And he's my housemate. Let's play some ball. I ain't playing ball with no ball hogging, trash talking. Showboat, Nike wear. High flying. Donut dunking. Hip hopping. Homeboy from Harlem. And I ain't playing ball with no flat footed. Boston loving. Gravity bound. Nike wear. No dribbling. Golden hair. Hockey playing. Born boy. From South Dakota. Hold up. If we're going to live together, we got to play together. The more colors, the more better. Peace. It's been almost two hours. Tom. He was uh, just going to the store, wasn't he? You know Kevin. He does this every time. Mm -hmm. He's your brother. Well, you gave him the keys. The Toyota Celica, rated by brothers-in-law everywhere, is their favorite car to borrow. I think I see headlights. Salsa Cycles wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Johnny Rockets was waiting longer for long-distance calls to connect. So they've come back to AT&T, and we want you back. Come back with AT&T Partners in Business. AT&T Quality and 20% discounts to the 20 numbers you choose or the area code you call most. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. Double zero, Kevin Duckworth in a sixth NBA season out of 
Eastern Illinois and Portland last year. He caught the most heat for the Blazers' disappointing showing in the playoffs, and we talked with him about that subject. Um, I always was taught that this is a team sport. Uh, I don't believe that you can single, single out one guy out of a team to say he lost the, the series. Uh, I believe so, yeah. I definitely always say that it was unjust. Interesting that Chicago felt Duckworth might be the key to this series. They had to pay special attention to him in game one when he picked up early fouls. Only 25 minutes, seven points, five rebounds. In game two, 43 minutes, 14 points. The big jumpers, high in regulation, and eight rebounds for Kevin Duckworth. He did struggle during the regular season. The, the shot was not going, and he does have that good touch. Picked it up towards the end and has had a good playoff. Portland came out, missed its first three shots. They've hit their last five. They are five for eight from the floor. Chicago is four of nine. Portland with a 12-10 lead, 6.45 to go in this opening quarter. Now Buck Williams posting up on Horace Grant. Here's Duckworth. Rebounded by Pippen. And the Bulls look to break. Short with the pull-up. to Grant make contact no says Mike Mathis although Terry Porter disagrees so off the errant pass the Bulls get it back as Michael Jordan came down that time and shot the jumper in transition Porter was defending it he just ran out took off down the floor basically said if it comes back to Michael so what that's where the long outlet look came from Jordan using the screen. So Cartwright with the pick. And Jordan with a second field goal has tied the game at 12. Whether this is a long-range effect to wear Michael Jordan down or not, he's had three people defending him so far. Chrysler getting inside. A fast start for Clyde. He has seven points. Saying the three people have been Drexler, Porter, and Kersey on Michael Jordan already this basketball game. Paxson. And that an unusual look for Paxson angling left and then shooting to his right. Able to hit to tie the game at 14. We used to see Paxson floating to that corner all alone, knocking out the jumpers. Out against Cartwright, his second. who has been a key factor over the first two games, will replace Bill Conroy. Scott Williams, second-year player from North Carolina, has done an excellent job in game one. The three men off the bench, Scott Williams, B.J. Armstrong, Cliff Levingston, combining on a 15 of 24 shooting performance. Game two, a different story. So Jackson stayed with the starters most of the way. And actually came back with the starters at a point where the Bulls had built up a 10-point lead. Some people felt, hey, why not stay with those guys? The reserves instead fill up back to his starters who he felt more comfortable with. Eventually the loss obviously opens the door for criticism. Here's Drexler. Air ball handled by Percy. Gets it back again. Finds Drexler. Beats Williams. Trailblazer team is about. You have to live with some of those shots. Understanding they come up with second and third efforts. Scott Williams may have gotten away with the travel. That is certainly the feeling of the crowd. He has brought the Bulls within one. Buckworth thought he was fouled. Here's Jordan. One on three and passes on the shot. Pippen and on the switch by Duckworth goes right at him. Finding Grant. It's a hole, Josh to Drexler. You may question some of the hurry, quick perimeter shots that this team takes, but they get after it. They work at getting the ball back, 
It was an air ball. They got it back. It leads to a, uh, a sure score inside by Buck Williams. And that's why Rick Adelman understands the mentality and what this team is about and lives with some of the shots that other guys might get a little nervous with because their athleticism will produce extra shots for them. Oh, Grant will go to the line. Duckworth called for his first. So Horace Grant to the free throw line for the first time. Game two on Friday. Chicago only 17 for 26 from the foul line for 65%. Both these clubs are not good free throw shooting teams. Yet. And Portland has opened up having their problems two of seven from the line. Cliff Robinson checking in for Cliff Robinson, Robinson will replace Jerome Kersey. Grant trying to break the tie. 4.22 left, first quarter. Some pressure here by Chicago. But not the real aggressive. This is the token press they use just to use up a little time on the 24-second clock. Kirkwood, Robinson, and Williams now up front. Porter and Brexler at the guards. Nice play by Pippen, stripping Robinson. Three on two. Pippen all the way. The Bulls 20. The Trailblazers 17. Duckworth set the pick, pick and roll. Yes. Same shot he hit to tie the game at the end of regulation. The same man rotating over, trying to block it. Grant got there a little bit late in game two. That time was closer, but still, nice jump of that time by Kevin. And John Paxson buries another jump shot. Paxson, 16 points on Friday night, four of seven from three-point land. Robinson works his way in, rejected by Williams. Scott Williams thought he was fouled. But a good hustle play by Williams. Well, rotating over from the weak side of the floor or the off side, away from the ball, Williams comes over and saves another layup opportunity. The Bulls defense does an excellent job of covering for one another. He just doesn't happen to agree. Jordan with the steal and then flips it out to Grant. Horace Grant able to hit and he drew the foul. What a pretty pass tossed by Jordan to ignite the break. So much of the Bulls offense comes as a result of excellent defense. In game number two, they produced only five steals overall. Jordan, without even looking, understands that he's got big men that can run the floor. He got Grant finishing, and just in case he misses, Scott Williams there to follow back up. The crowd responding to the entrance of Danny Ames, one of the Portland heroes. On Friday night, Kevin Duckworth, who played well, will sit down, leaves with five points. Nine points in overtime, tying a finals overtime record that was held by Bill Beer and John Havlicek. On the subject of Beer, Michael Jordan, who tied the three-point field goal shooting record for an NBA Finals game on Wednesday night with uh, six when told he tied Beer. said had he known that, he would have gone for the record. Drexler with a nice feed for Robinson. Portland has a very small unit on the floor. When they went to this three-guard setup in game number two, it was very productive. They had a good, quick run against the Bulls, picked up some transition scores. Lasers down by six off a 11-2 run by Chicago. With the three. Danny Ainge off the bench. Chicago is called for time. Revolutionary Goodyear AquaTread Radio. Its advanced deep groove aqua channel channels water away as you drive. It makes sense the way the water flows away. The water goes right off the tire. The water flows away. The all-new, all-season AquaTread Radio. 
Only from Goodyear. Oh, I get a feeling of good stability and security. Another reason we say the best tires in the world. It does what they say it'll do. Have Goodyear written all over them. They're the best tires I've ever had. Think about who you'll be driving around over the next, say, seven days. That's how long your dealer said it would take before he could fix your brakes. At Midas, we can fix them right the same day you bring in your car. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. Hey, I'm thirsty. Let's drink here. Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. When you want one, there's no stopping the taste. Usually. Power windows are just one of the many useful features you get with the extra value option package on the 1992 Toyota 4Runner. So is air conditioning. Power door locks. Cruise control. Power side mirrors and special chrome trim. Of course, up to $900 savings is a pretty nice feature too. And just imagine what you can do with that. Relative unknown, always overshadowed by his arch rival Carl Lewis. But with one spectacular jump, America's Mike Powell made history by smashing Bob Beeman's unbreakable world record. In Barcelona, can Powell leap into history again? Mike Powell, one to watch this summer on NBC. The transition game for Portland is beautiful to watch. Drexler with the ball. Michaels, the center fielder, anticipating that he just might try to come down the lane and dunk it. Ames spots up in the corner, so Michael has to hold for a second. He holds just long enough so that the pass can be made and that it's too late in the rotation out as Ames knocks down the three. And knocking down three-pointers is nothing new for Danny Ames, who is the number two man all time. And Playoff competition, 108 from three-point range for Danny Ames during the playoffs. He passed Byron Scott of the Lakers. He is now chasing Michael Cooper. Danny Ames with much championship experience, a member of two Boston Celtic title-winning teams in 1984 and 1986. Ames shooting one for five in the three-point line after the first two games during the season, a 34% three-point shooter. Jordan beginning to heat up. That's his third field goal. He has six, and the Bulls lead 27-22. Usage of timeouts by coaches. A little run by Portland. Phil takes the timeout. They come out, set up. Jordan knocks out to Jay, takes the crowd out of it, settles everything. Oh, beautifully done. Robinson with the perfectly tied pass for Drexler. Well, the one thing the timeout does do, give the other team a chance to draw off something that might work for them as well. Portland trailing by three, 145 remaining first quarter. They double up on Pippen. Williams had it knocked away, able to recover, finds Jordan. A broken play that the Bulls were able to click on for some good fortune. <laughs> Scott Williams, when he got up in the air, didn't know whether to kick out left high, kick low right, or then decided the best thing, let me find Michael. Michael throwing the air ball. Foul. Let's go back a moment ago. After the timeout, Chicago scored, but you know what? Rick Adelman was drawing up something special also, the lob pass to Clyde Drexel. And then Scott Williams finds himself in the unusual position of decision-making. Well, I'm not quite sure that's what he wanted to happen, but what did happen was very nice for Chicago. Cliff Robinson called for the foul. Scotty Pippen, two of two from the line. So Chicago has opened up by hitting his first six free throw. 111 remaining. First quarter, the scene shifting to the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon. The years will capacity crowd, 12,888 on hand, the 601st consecutive sellout. Rebounded in aggressive fashion by Scott Williams. It looks like Michael almost was inviting that. Didn't run real hard at Danny Ainge. Kind of said, well, let me see if you can knock out another one from behind the three-point line. Bulls by six. Jordan changes oh. his mind. 
Morris Grant off to the fast start. He has 11. Some beautiful passing here in the first quarter by Michael Jordan. And you really have to know your teammates and have confidence that time. If, if Jordan doesn't believe his teammate's going to roll to the basket, he can't elevate, hang, and then at the last minute drop it down. He has to believe right here that Grant's going to make the roll. The last second he drops it off after drawing the double team. And Buck Williams to the line, fouled by Scott Williams. Buck Williams had a very strong game on Friday in Chicago. Came back in aggressive fashion after getting the early foul trouble in game one. 19 points, 14 rebounds for Buck. It all starts with minutes on the floor. If you're in early foul trouble, you can't have a lot of minutes on the floor. But if you stay away from the fouls, particularly early in the game, get into the flow, then a guy like Buck, who works so hard, he's going to have good numbers at the end of the game. And Bobby Hansen has checked in, replacing Michael Jordan. Jordan sits down with eight points, three assists. Bobby Hansen hit a, a three-pointer in the midst of that the John Hansen three-point show the other night. And he has been getting the minutes in this series. And Armstrong now in the backcourt. Grant with Pippen and Williams up front. Chicago with a six point lead. Shot clock at four. Here's Pippen. Strong move by Scotty Pippen, who has looked sharp in this first quarter. Great move by Pippen because he passed the ball from about 25 feet out. Then it was a pass and go. Move without it. Final seconds of the quarter. Robinson with another air ball, and that is the end of the first. Here in Portland, the Bulls 34, and the Blazers 26. Smart basketball. Pippen had moved without it after he passed it, then it's a matter of just going to the basket, getting it back, and the left-handed conversion by Scotty Pippen, the bad wrist. I want a new car. We're not new car kind of people. A Toyota Corolla with all kinds of fancy options. We're not fancy options kind of people. But now we can save big on air conditioning, AM, FM, stereo cassette, power, windows, and door locks, the whole shebang. Save up to $1,100 on the Toyota Corolla LE Extra Value Package. Guess we're fancy options kind of people now. Change is good. I love what you do for me, Toyota! Wendy's Super Value Menu really saves you money. Take today. For lunch, I had a Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, Biggie Fries, and a Biggie Drink, all 99 cents each. So I had money left over for a while. Wendy's Super Value Menu, the best place to spend your summer. What could he possibly be doing with his wife on a Saturday afternoon? Can I clean up the garage or scrub the toilet? Or... She's like a slave driver, that woman. Yeah. I never let a woman treat me that way. So what, what, what should we do tonight? We could talk about cars. Yeah. High performance cars. Luxury performance cars. Family cars. Light trucks. If you've got the car, we've got the tire. Michelin. Because so much is riding on your tires. Rashad back at the Portland Coliseum. Now, after game two, Michael Jordan told me not only was he disappointed in losing the game, but it was the most exhausted that he had ever been. Just uh, with a couple of minutes left to go in the first quarter, Bobby Hansen was coming in for Scottie Pippen, and Michael said, no, let me go and sit down. So he looks exhausted right now. Marv? 
All right, Ahmad, it was during the course of that series against the Knicks where it looked like at times Michael Jordan was worn down, lost his legs. He did go through a, a series of injuries, and then in the series against Cleveland, he had the, the congestion problem, fighting off a cold, touch of the flu, but he's been, been strong the last week. Although, as Ahmad just pointed out, he was tired in game two on Friday night, and that obviously is the case here again. Well, he played 50 minutes in game number two, and as Michael himself mentioned, in fact, on Inside Stuff yesterday, it's the other things, not just the basketball that wear you down. It's all the other things pulling on you, particularly in the finals, the championship series, that mental fatigue that catches up with you. Second quarter underway and off the scramble, a kickball called on Scott Williams. So the ball goes back to Portland, and they get a new 24. Rick Adelman has Danny Ainge and Enos Watley now in the backcourt. Clyde Drexler moves up front, being guarded by Scotty Pippen. Earl Kersey is back. Flip Robinson also on the floor. Kersey for Robinson has not been hitting the outside shot. In fact, has been way off. You know what I find unusual? In game one, Portland scores 30 points at Chicago. Game two, they scored 31 points at Chicago in the first quarter. Here at home for the first time, 26 points. So the Bulls defense did a good job digging in the first quarter. And Drexler comes out of the pack. Wadley rejected by Williams. That's his second block. And it's another time we see Williams coming from the offside of the floor to help a teammate get out. He does that so well, anticipating when he might be needed. Pippen using the screen. And a loose ball foul. Called on Portland. It's on Percy, his second. Team defense starts with an understanding of when someone needs help. Right there, Watley getting set to shoot it over the top of a smaller B.J. Armstrong. The big guy, Williams, over to the block. Early second quarter, and the Bulls lead 34-26. Scotty Pippen. Pippen has nine points. The high man is Grant with 11. Drexler leading Portland with nine. The Blazers have missed their last five field goal attempts. Watley wide open. And a loose ball foul against Chicago. You have double duty coming up right now for Pippen because with this unit on the floor, he's the one that they will rely on Chicago to create and get shots for other people. Williams, Grant, they'll do it off the offensive boards. As far as B.J. and Hanson, they have to spot up. But now he's also guarding Drexler, so double duty fatigue factor here for Pippen a concern. A push-off called on Drexler as he was angling for position with Pippen. That's the second committed by Clyde. And Pippen took away the post up by Drexler, came around and got in front, fronted the low post. As a result, when the lob pass took place, Mike Matthews saw the shove or push-off by Drexler. Armstrong and Hanson are at the guards. And illegal defense. Up there it is, right there. They caught it underneath. Eddie Rush saw the illegal defense. The roll by Grant to the basket brought two defenders. He did not have the basketball. You can't double team a man without the ball. Timeout taken. The Bulls lead by 10. An all new Dateline NBC with Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips, Tuesday. I wish we could afford a minivan. You can, dear. Huh? For $13,800, you can have the number one minivan. Me. <laughs> sure, with no equipment. Oh, nothing but air conditioning, automatic transmission, minivan airbag, power steering and brakes, choice of warranty. I could kiss you. Please. You're a married man. Plymouth Voyager. An intelligent machine. My wife will really like you. What's her favorite color? Game Boy for Father's Day. Have you had your fun today? 
This may look like a typical light beer and a typical night at the lanes. But this is no typical night at the lanes and no typical bowler. Look, I'm an ordinary fellow. People think we're kind of mellow. I'm not here to sell you, but to throw you. To tell you tonight we're landing on the line with the funky rhythm rhyme. Busting the groove and double time. Keep sure as I got This doesn't taste like a typical light beer. This is cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light. Yeah, we're telling you, Ellen Torelli getting it right with the serious hype straight out of sight. Can't out of my head tonight we in the house. Hey. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation and its division, proud sponsors of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. By cold filter Genuine Draft Light, there's nothing typical about it. And by Levi's Dockers, nobody does color like Dockers. Some of the real basics of the illegal defensive call, you must have a man guarding a man. You cannot have a defender just guarding an area of the floor. Then if a man does have the basketball, you're allowed to double team that man. But you're not allowed to double team a man without the basketball. When we look back a moment ago to the illegal defensive call, here's the offensive player, Grant. There's one defensive player, there's two defensive players, but you know what? He doesn't have the basketball. That's a no-no, illegal defense. Two defenders on one man without the ball, not allowed in the NBA. Yes, he is the star of the Telestrator. Portland has missed its last six field goal attempts, and they have not shot well. Only 10 of 24 by Drexler. Sitting down now after picking up his second foul. Clyde has shot well, four of six for nine points. While Chicago, 15 of 25, 60% shooting. Michael Jordan sitting out these uh, opening minutes of the second quarter. Bulls go to the weave, and then Pippen off the mark, but it's tipped and missed by Williams. And the officials checking it out. Mike Mathis's last touch by the Blazers. And did they pull out something from the past, the three-man weave? Yes, they did. And what it does is it's unusual. Teams don't see it a whole lot. And it forces jump switches, which in turn produce a lot of mismatches. All of a sudden, the big guy's guard, the small guy, he can't play him off the dribble. And that was deflected out. Chicago with 17 on the 24. A 10-point. Chicago advantage, their biggest lead of the game. Cartwright, yes. And a very nice setup from Pippen. And a different way of creating. Instead of being out in front with the ball or on the wing with the ball, that time he got it down to the low post. Just took his time, picked out the open man who was caught. Well, the Blazers have now missed their last seven shots. And it will be Chicago possession. Pippen, whipping by Kersey, and he drew the foul. That's an unusual shot, meaning that normally Chicago doesn't take those hurried, quick shots. But when the initial pass took place to Pippen, the defensive player lunging for the steal missed. Pippen saw the opportunity, and that's what you talk about when you say decision-making process. Do you take it, try and be aggressive and get a quick score, or do you just pull it back out and let the defense catch up? Coaches understand which players have the ability to make good decisions. They live and die with those guys. Scotty Pippen is now four of five from the line. Ten point. Michael Jordan, who as Ahmad related to us earlier, has been on the tired side. Similar situation to what took place in the overtime game on Friday, and he has been sitting out since the end of the first quarter. He sat down with 29 seconds remaining the first so for Michael this is an extended rest period and obviously it has not hurt the Bulls something similar we saw with Portland the other night when Drexel went out the other guys step up their performance and play a little bit better at that time now you see Phil Jackson facing questions <laughs> yeah. the way Rick Adelman did now let's see now are you better off without Michael Jordan we well, use him again in the stretch run of a close yeah. game an 8-0 advantage since Jordan sat down. Hanson. Williams missed the tip. And Porter comes away with it. Robinson.
Sanchez. Duckworth. Tipped by Robinson. Hook Robinson had missed his first six field goal attempts. Finally able to hit. A 22nd timeout taken by the Bulls. The Bulls lead 40-28. Well, big, wide body, Kevin Duckworth on the glass, clears a little more room for himself by shoving that shoulder in there, and then as it rolls off the rim, the live, active body of Robinson produces the follow-up scores. With Robinson out there and Kersey out there on the glass, a couple live bodies to go after the ball and get those second shot opportunities. If your perimeter game isn't going, find another way to score. Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant leading the way for Chicago with 11. And you check out the uh, Scotty Pippen profile throughout the playoffs. And it's really uh, startling to see when he does well, the Bulls win. In effect, they need the combination of Pippen with Jordan. But check it out. Of the 12 wins, he shoots 51%, averages 21 per game. And the six losses, look at the figures on the left-hand side of your screen. 36% shooting. His entire stat line is down. Four, 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 Statistics can be deceiving at times, but there's no question that when the two players are in sync and functioning well together, it makes this Chicago Bulls team that much better. It takes them to a completely different level. That is number three on Duckworth. Buck Williams will come on. And this has been a problem for Duckworth. Right there, he takes a foul, which he doesn't need away from the basketball on a simple cut by Bill Cartwright. Yeah, you want to body your people up, but when you have two and you know the team needs you in there, you can't pick up what you would call a silly foul, an unnecessary foul. It wasn't trying to stop a layup or anything. Portland needs him on the floor. The Trailblazers have gone into a funk here the second quarter. Michael Jordan is back, and the Bulls continue to get to every loose ball. Porter thought he was pushed by Pippen. Pippen for Grant. And the Bulls now lead 42-28. Terry Porter continues the discussion with Mike Mattis as he heads to the front court. Buck Williams forced that shot. He did not have position. Here's Jordan on the open floor. Ains played him well. Armstrong and it's rebounded by Percy. Lacers wanted a run, but the Bulls got back on the transition. Ainge met by Jordan. Finding Porter. Chicago leads by 12 points. Just a little brush cut that time. A high post man. Porter ran his guy off. The guy happened to be B.J. Armstrong. Produced an easy score. Foul committed by E. That's his first. And a timeout is called with 6.33 to go in the first half. A humble secretary. A charming millionaire. But every time their romance starts to flare, he gets called away on business. I saw her first. Now, while the bat's away, the cat will play. <laughs> Batman returns June 19th, but it's PG-13. Hey, going out? Yep. Can I borrow your car? Duster? Yeah. You just bought a car. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to be seen in it. So, why'd you buy it? What else could I get for ten grand? Well, for around ten grand, I could have gotten a duster. Chrysler Plymouth introduces the new duster. V6, sports suspension, air conditioning, AM, FM cassette, all for out of ten grand. The game of basketball, to me, best feeling in the world. It's a feeling that you can't explain. I enjoy the competition. You have to love what you do. There's no other place I'd rather be than on a basketball court doing an NBA game. I just love the game of basketball that much. I feel I need to play all the time. It's that much joy. It's that much fun playing the game. 
was nipped for the gold in 84. Four years later, he didn't even make the Olympic team and retired. But after his mother's death last summer, Pablo Morales returned to the pool and made the 92 team at age 27. Now, can he finally realize his Olympic dream? Pablo Morales, one to watch this summer on NBC. In the Coliseum, they keep a board known as the Hustle Board. Statistics which coaches and players refer to by the extra effort that you need to pick up these categories. Points for block shots, points for rebounds, points for steals. When you total up right now, Chicago giving a little bit more extra effort up 23-17 on the Hustle Board. And the crowd looking to urge the home club on. They are down 42-30, six and a half remaining. Second quarter, Cliff Levingston has come on for the first time. Hardway with a beautiful trade to draw the foul on Robinson. He had Cliff Robinson committed to the move. Hartwright normally goes with his first move. Defensive players know that. So Robinson anticipating he's going to go up right there, leaves his feet, then just tries to stop the easy layup by committing the foul. But Robinson with a second foul. Bill Cartwright missed the first 17 games of the season with a broken left hand. He's a player who's made it back from a, a broken foot injury. That sidelined him for two years when he was a member of the New York Knicks. And he said that he might need an operation on his knees after this season if the pain does not go away. Cartwright way off from the line. He he did shoot well at the line the other night. A key statistic here, I think, for Portland is the assist column. In game one, Portland had only 16 assists. In game two, 27. When you're passing, playing unselfishly, getting high percentage shots, you shoot well. When you're not doing that, taking too many perimeter shots or going solo one-on-one, -on -one, you don't pick up those assists. Right now in this game, a 15-7 to advantage for Chicago in the assist column. Going into this game, 72-43 to assists in favor of the Bulls. That foul called on Grant. Robinson being played by Cartwright. Guarded by Levingston. A lot of dribbling, not much happening for the Blazers, and they, they turn it over. Exactly right. Lack, see, there he is. He's telling him, move, movement, movement. Rick Adelman sees it. You can feel it. Too much one-on-one -on -one stuff. Hold the ball too long. Chicago's offense is predicated on read the defense. If you don't have get rid of the basketball. Except if you're Michael and want to make yes. something happen off the dribble. Trying to set a pick. Actually able to brush by Armstrong. B.J. Armstrong with his first field goal. A great example right there. That ball changed sides of the floor twice, got taken to the baseline, got kicked back out to the top of the circle, and then an open jump shot gets knocked down. Obviously, if you make shots, it helps. And the Blazers are not making their shots. Loose ball foul against Portland. That's three on Kersey, and suddenly Portland in severe foul difficulty. Three on Kersey, three on Duckworth. Rexler has two, as does Robinson. And right after the whistle blew, Kersey started to react, and we showed Rick Adelman, the coach, kind of saying to Jerome, just relax, settle down. Don't say anything, just stay right in the game. It's not the time to start exploding just because we're down a few points on the scoreboard. And Kersey will sit down. The Trailblazers have not been hit with a technical thus far in this NBA Final Series. Back in game four against Utah, they were hit with six technical fouls. One was for an illegal defense. Utah shot 55 uh, free throws by Drexler receiving uh, two technicals, an automatic ejection. And Portland has had the reputation of blowing up, losing their cool, so Rick Adelman trying to keep things calm. It's a 15-point Chicago lead, their biggest lead of the game. And the foul on Armstrong, it is a block. One of those hairline calls because 
it comes so quickly. The decision, guessing here by BJ, he thinks he's going right. He guesses right, but in the official's opinion, he did not have his feet planted or set. Therefore, the block is called. Blazers only 2 of 11 from the field here in the second. Rexler, and he drew the foul. Well, Jordan with the gamble went for the steal, and then he did receive the help from Cartwright. And Cartwright is called for his third. Well, the covering up for one another. Cartwright saw that Jordan was going to go for the steal. Immediately leaves his man, comes over, and says, no, no, you can't have an easy score. I've got to contest that and try and block it. And Scott Williams replaces Bill Cartwright. Been another solid outing for Scott Williams. A couple of block shots, four rebounds. Tenth point for Clyde Rexler. The Bulls 45, the Trailblazers 32. They isolate Jordan on Rexler. That time, in an effort to get on the offensive board, Horace Grant, a little bit too excited. The push-off right there, just move Ainge out of the way if you want to get the ball, but unfortunately, the official had a real good look. Three apiece now on Grant. And Cartwright, Percy and Duckworth each have three, and Phil Jackson goes to his bench. Scotty Pippen has been resting for a while, as has John Paxson, so they will come on. And Armstrong and Grant will sit down. Talk about role players and, and the appreciation. In fact, Johnny Bach, the assistant coach from Chicago, calls Grant his warrior. Consistency, averaging 10 and a half rebounds against uh, Portland thus far, shooting 64% from the floor, and, and a half just a, a very, very steady, reliable kind of guy. And he understands what his job is for this team. That's why they're successful. Chicago by 11. And the crowd trying to get the Blazers back into it. Williams rebounded by Robinson. Ainge looking for a cutting Buck Williams. Had it broken up. And it was a nice move because Clyde Drexler was running the same left lane as Buck. And Ainge held it. Eye contact told Drexler, keep going, go through, go underneath the basket and get in the right corner. And that opened it up for the look to Buck. Unfortunately, the defensive player got a hand on it. Four minutes to go in this first half. Marv Albert, Mike Fratello, Bob Rashad later on at halftime will be joined by Bob Costas and Quinn Buckner. Here's Robinson and he is fouled. Right now, the two players talking it out. Levingston and Williams say, wait a minute, who's going to jump out in the corner and get him on that last play? They both started to go. They both started to come back. Then the ball was on the floor, and they both went after the dribble, so they're just trying to communicate and decide how they're going to play that particular play. Foul was committed by Cliff Levingston, and Cliff Robinson was not a good free-throw shooter with a line for the first time. You know, in basketball, you have to have one guy... Uh, that is willing to give up quickly in the argument. If you have two yes. guys that like to debate too long, play goes on, the, no one settled anything. Robinson, with only his third point, he's one of eight from the field. Chicago anticipating a little double team action here by Portland to be very cautious with the way they bring the basketball up the floor. Extends to a 47-35 lead. Pippen has 13. He's the high man. Robinson rebounded by Scott Williams. Scott 
Williams is big, he's strong, he has great position and very, very good hands. And you, you feel secure when he goes up that he's going to come down with it. And a foul on Ains. Call for a push. In the last game, the mismatch was Levingston on Ains. Chicago tried to go to it here with Ains matched up against Pippen. They're gambling on the fact that Scotty won't be able to get him down low in the post area. They're gambling on the fact that he'll stay outside. But Pippen working hard, backs him down, backs him down. And Danny, as we know for years, one of the great actors just in the NBA, the facial expressions, the flops on the floor, the, the, uh, the look, the expression. Danny Ainge spent seven years with the Boston Celtics on two championship teams, then on to Sacramento. This is second season with Portland. A high school star, Eugene Oregon, who has come home to Portland. Last touch by the ball. No, a uh, loose ball foul on Scott Williams. That is his third. Scott Williams kind of chuckling because he felt it just should have been make the call, give the ball to the other team. Instead, the foul calls some point opportunities. Free throw line is so hard to make the calls because the bodies are so close to start out with. Williams working hard, getting squeezed by Drexler and Buck at the same time. And the foul called Williams a little bit too aggressive trying to go after him. So Buck Williams, two of two from the line. The other night we talked about how far he has come in his free throw shooting proficiency. Now up to 75%. Three-time All-Star. Member of the NBA's All-Defensive Squad. Twice Rookie of the Year out of the University of Maryland back in, in 82. And a member of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, Buck Williams, who spent eight years with the New Jersey Nets, went into the deal for Sam Bowie three years back. Stacy King has come on for the first time, replacing Scott Williams. Bowles by 11 with just under three remaining in the half. Michael Jordan. Yes. Ten points for Jordan. It's been a very low key. First half, he's hit five of eight from the field. For some reason, I still think Portland realizes he's out there on the floor. There's something about his presence. Uh, yes, they are uh, well aware of number 23 as he sends Trexler backpedaling. Clyde has played him well here in this first half. Now Pippen, try to back in. Shot clock at two. Jordan for three. Rebound King. Stacy King hitting on the follow to give the Bulls a 52-37 lead. And Rick Adelman calls for time. A tough assignment for Jordan. Get the ball thrown to you with two seconds left on the 24 and have to shoot a three-pointer with Drexler extending out defensively. And Portland in the second quarter has managed only two of 13 from the floor. Quote, a mid-size Dodge Dakota with a new optional 230 horsepower Magnum V8. Outpowers, outhauls, and just plain outpulls even full-size 5-liter V8s from Ford and Chevy. Unquote. Dodge, the most powerful line of trucks anywhere. Get 750 cash back on Dakota during the Dodge Dare to Compare Challenge. This might look like a typical light beer and a typical day on the slopes. But this is cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light, so there's nothing typical about it. Weekend. No time. No briefcase. Just plastic. It all boils down to this. No other card you can carry is accepted in more places and in more ways Food. at home and abroad. Okay. I got it. Then MasterCard. It's the only card you need. Rooms. MasterCard. Not a bad day's work. Master the moment. To change the image of a rebel, change lenses. You've got the rebel camera. Now get the EOS lenses. Image is everything. EOS rebel and lenses from Canon. So advanced, it's simple. 
She looks more like a gymnast than a diver, standing only five feet tall and weighing a mere 90 pounds. More incredible is the fact that Fu Ming Jia, the world's premier diver, is only 13 years old. Can this youngster's amazing acrobatics bring her Olympic gold? Fu Ming Jia, one to watch this summer on NBC. Well, I know one of my favorite okay, moments so this season uh, are several uh, weeks ago in a uh, feature uh, handled by Inside Stuff. Ahmad Rashad went up against uh, Shaquille O'Neal, a little one-on-one, -on -one, and then it was Shaquille's turn. He whipped by Ahmad, and a uh, funny thing happened. <laughs> Shattering the backboard. Is that all the you subject got? of Ahmad. And Shaquille, let's go to Ahmad, who has his... Uh, one-on-one -on -one partner alongside him. All right, Marv, you know, the score when we played was one-to-one, -one, so Shaquille has come all the way up here trying to finish that game. You're looking for me, right? My body's lying. The score was five-to-one when I ripped the backboard down. The score was five-to-one. No lie, no lie, no lie. The we, score was five-to-one. We do have more basket than Portland. We can finish this up. No, it don't matter to me. We'll do that later, Marv. I'll keep you updated on what the outcome is. Five-to-one. Remember that. Oh, coming up at halftime, Shaquille will join Bob Costas, and you'll hear more about probably our one-on-one -on -one game, huh? All right, Marv. I, I'm certain that is on Shaquille's mind. The All-American out of LSU, Shaquille O'Neal, who is uh, all but a lot to be the number one pick in the June 24th NBA draft. The draft, by the way, will be held right here in the in the Coliseum. Like Michael Jordan came up limping. Jordan coming down right here is where he winds up. Right there. Steps on Buck Williams' ankle as the ball goes out of bounds. A minute 40 remaining in this first half. Brexler for three. Clyde Brexler hitting his second three-pointer. And the Chicago lead is now 12. Stacy King to the post-up move. And rejected and fouled by Buck Williams. It's almost like for a split second, Buck Williams forgot that Stacy King is a left-hander. If you give him that baseline, it's his strength. He lets him turn and go that way, anticipating he's gonna come back to the middle. But Stacy, the left-hander, goes to the score, and then Buck felt he had pinned it to the backboard. The body contact is what was called. Second on Buck. Stacey King in his third season out of Oklahoma. He was a lottery selection. A number six pick on the disappointing side his first two years. Had a couple of incidents with the coaching staff and most significant walked out of practice. One part last year, suspended by the team and has not been in the regular rotation this season. In fact, Scott Williams, who has played very well, passed him by. Here's Ames. So the Chicago lead, once 15, is now 10 with one minute left in the half. Well, to show you how good the defense has been for Chicago, without those last five points, they have 37 points. In game one, they had 51 at the half. Game two, 54 at the half. A traveling violation. The basket does not count. Trying it back in. Again, the little step right there before the ball was put on the floor. There's Ames to the drive, and he'll go to the foul line. A sudden burst by the Blazers, who have been struggling in the second quarter. At one point, they had hit only two of 15 shots. Danny Ames will go to the line. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, Bob Costas and Quinn Buckner will have a look at the U.S. Olympic basketball team, and as I mentioned, they'll be joined by Shaquille O'Neal and Bob and Quinn at halftime. Once again, providing a lift off the bench, three of three from the line, eight points in all. When Chicago is running the clock down to get the last shot of the quarter as the free throw is missed, they use one of two sets, an open spread set or a high pick and roll. Jordan, yes. 12 
for Michael Jordan. What they just did is they ran a two-for-one. They tried to get a quick shot in a hurry so that when Portland comes back and shoots, if they can secure the defensive rebound, they will get one more shot attempt. There's about four or five seconds differential between game clock and shot clock. Page pass on the three. Here's Brutzler. Good feed from Williams. Violation. Stepping over the line that time. Stacey King hurrying to get the ball inbounds. Wanted to throw it deep around the half court line. At the last second, the defensive man for Portland shot the gap. He tried to pull it back, but he stepped over the baseline. A critical turnover at this point for Chicago. Nine and a tenth second remaining. First half. Quarter. Final seconds. Pippen got it off. Good finish to the second quarter for the Trailblazers. They conclude with an 8-2 run. Michael Jordan, 6 of 10, 12 points. Clyde Drexler, 6 of 8 for 16 points. So, at halftime, it's the Chicago Bulls leading the Portland Trailblazers 54-45. to Coming up, the halftime report with Bob and Quinn. We'll be back in Portland in a moment. Something about summer makes fall a little jealous. Boats and barbecues, lawnmowers, lemonade. But hey, don't blame fall for being jealous. Summer is a very tough act to follow. And nobody does summer like Dockers Shorts. Dodge Dakota Sport with a new optional 180 horsepower Magnum V6 out accelerates Ford Ranger and Chevy S10 and does it for under 10 grand. Unquote. Dodge, the most powerful line of trucks anywhere. Get 750 cash back on Dakota during the Dodge Dare to Compare Challenge. Four star lighting wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Trefethen Vineyards was having trouble getting long-distance calls through on the first try. So they've come back to AT&T, and we want you back. Come back with AT&T Partners in Business. AT&T Quality at 20% discounts to the 20 AT&T numbers you choose, or the area code you call most. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. High-performance cars, luxury-performance cars. Family cars, light trucks. If you've got the car, Michelin's got the tire. This might look like a typical light beer and a typical day on the slopes. But this is cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light, so there's nothing typical about it. Why are more people watching The Tonight Show with Jay Leno than all the other late-night talk shows combined? The New York Post says it's Jay himself. The Boston Herald also gives credit to Branford Marsalis and the hot new band. Or maybe it's great guests like Bill Cosby, Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell, Katie Seagal, and many more this week. The hot new Tonight Show on NBC. This is the Prudential Halftime Report. Brought to you by the companies of the Prudential. In a changing world, one thing remains rock solid, the Prudential. Halftime at Memorial Coliseum in Portland, the Bulls leading the Blazers. 54 to 45, at one point the Bulls had a lead as large as 15. Welcome to the Prudential Halftime Report, Bob Costas along with Quinn Buckner. And before we get to Quinn's comment on the first half, let's take a look at this pattern of game three responses dating back to last year. In the playoffs for the Bulls, they relinquished the home court advantage against the Lakers when they lost game one at Chicago Stadium last year. They won the second game big at home, and then they took an overtime victory. Remember, Jordan hit the shot to force OT. They won by eight in overtime and seized the home court advantage right back. This year, the Knicks took the first game. They go back to Madison Square Garden, 1-1. Chicago wins game three. Then in the next round of the playoffs, they win the first. They're blown out at home in game two. 
by Cleveland at Chicago. They go to Richfield Coliseum. They win to reclaim the advantage. And the way they have gotten this lead of nine so far in this first half, Quinn, is mostly with the half-court game. They are really slicing the Blazer defense up. 18 assists on their 22 baskets. And I think that's really critical, folks, because what that means is now not only are the Bulls moving the basketball, but they're moving themselves. But in response to what happened here for the th three games, game three, Michael Jordan always steps up after they've had some major loss. And when he steps his game up, everybody else on the club does that. They move the ball, they move themselves, and get themselves in position to score off of assist. Something else here, Phil Jackson is getting the most balanced scoring he's gotten in the past few games in the playoffs. Pippen 14, Grant 13, Jordan a dozen. Well, that's very important. But Pippen is the one I think is the most key because Pippen is a guy that gets everybody else involved in the game. And other than Michael, you know what he can do. When Pippen starts scoring, it lets everybody else off the bench and the other starters know, all right, I've got a chance to get baskets. I can get going, but I can get you off. He did that, and Horace Grant got in the game. The three fouls on Horace Grant I think are going to be a big key in the second half because Horace is active defensively and rebounds so much importantly for Chicago. But at least the Blazers got it into single digits at nine. At one point, they trailed by 15. Shifting gears here. In the last few days, we've gotten a chance to see one quarter of the U.S. Olympic basketball team in Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Clyde Drexler. In about three weeks, those three plus nine others will assemble right here in the Coliseum for the Tournament of the Americas, which serves as the Olympic qualifying tournament. With the recent addiction of Drexler and Duke's Christian Leitner, the Olympic roster is set, and the waiting will soon be over. They're blessed with size, speed, and power. They're the best shooters, rebounders, and passers the USA has to offer. 11 NBA players and one collegiate. A collection of talent that staggers the imagination. The competition in the Olympics is 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 so exciting because it's the it's the top level in the world and it's it's just a great honor i think people can't really understand it until they they feel like they're the one person representing a whole country and every time people look at you that's what they see of the united states so it, it's a thrill every year you can win some basketball games or you can win or you have a chance every year but the olympics only come along every four years that's why it's so magnified and then to get a chance to represent your country, but he magnifies it more. You see the players go out there and they compete for the United States, and, and you see them win the gold and standing up on that platform and watching the flag being raised up and the national anthem being played. And, uh, anybody that doesn't dream that someday that could happen to them uh, isn't paying very close attention because it's a thrill. This is going to be totally different just from playing for the city of Chicago, but when the time comes, I, I know it's going to be probably the greatest moment in my life. For some, a gold medal would cap a fabulous career. For others, like Patrick Ewing, Chris Mullins, and Michael Jordan, it's a chance to strive again for Olympic glory. When I got the opportunity to play in the Olympics when I was in college, the dream started to come a little bit uh, closer to reality a little bit. And uh, when I made the team, you know, it was a real fulfilled dream. And, uh, I just want to, to uh, cherish it, and now I get to do it twice, and uh, very rare people uh, get the opportunity to do something twice of, of this stature. And I always thought uh, it would be nice to play on the Olympic team, and that's when only the amateurs were allowed to participate. I thought it would have been a great uh, opportunity. And now to get this chance as a professional, uh, it doesn't get any better. There's going to be a group of guys that are very focused and going over and getting the job done, and, and uh, Americans are very proud to be considered a, the, the basketball country. And I think it's up to us now to go over and show the rest of the world that we are number one in basketball. It's a true world championship. You know, when you win that gold medal, you've um, defeated everyone. Whenever you put that USA uniform on, we're not talking about a silver or a bronze, we're talking about the gold. So it's added pressure, but it's a good added pressure that we look forward to. Right now, it's Drexler versus Jordan for the NBA title, but their debut as teammates is just around the corner. Let the games begin. 
Yeah, Quinn Buckner was a member of Dean Smith's squad in 1976, took the gold medal in Montreal. You've been following this pretty closely and with an eye this time on David Robinson's condition. That's right, Bob. And with David Robinson, David Robinson hurt his, his left thumb. He tore the ligaments in his, at the base of the thumb. They've already looked at it. He's had the surgery, been in rehabilitation for a month. He's scheduled to play in a game today down in San Antonio. Talk to general manager Bob Bass. They expect him he'll be all right to play in the Olympics. Larry Bird, I tell you what, he kind of got a bit of a break by coming out of the playoffs short in terms of the Celtics. I'm sure they don't like that. But for Larry Bird, that gives him a chance to rest his back. His back should be fine. He will play. Okay, thanks, Quinn. One other quick item here before a commercial. Jim Courier, who will be a member of the U.S. Olympic tennis team in Barcelona, captured his second straight French Open title earlier today in Paris. He beat Czech Peter Korda in straight sets, 7-5, 6-2, and 6-1. In breezing to the championship, Courier lost only one set in his six matches. Now, coming up next, we'll be joined by Shaquille O'Neal, all but certain to be the first pick in the upcoming NBA draft. That's right after this message from Prudential and a word from the NBA. constant change, there is one certainty, the financial strength of the rock, the prudential rock solid. is a busy basketball town these days. The NBA Finals and the Tournament of Americas are both being staged here in the Coliseum. And so will the NBA Draft two weeks from Wednesday. Three weeks ago in New Jersey, the draft lottery was held to determine who'd get the number one pick. And it came down to Charlotte and Orlando. In the 1992 NBA Draft goes to the Charlotte Hornets. And that means... Orlando's got it. <laughs> that the Orlando Magic will pick first in the 1992 NBA Draft. Well, you saw Pat Williams, who runs the Orlando Magic, and how, ex how excited he was to have a crack at Shaquille O'Neal. The question still is, how good a shot does he have at signing you? Well, uh, Orlando is a beautiful city, and uh, me, my agent, and my family plan to go to Orlando around the 17th or the 18th of June. And uh, I'm going away, you know, all my options, and I'm just going to do what's best. How much dough will it take? I don't know, $25 a game, I don't know. <laughs> well, you're, you're willing to play on a per-game basis. That's nice, kind of a CYO league yeah, sort yeah. of thing. What have you been doing? Have you been able to stay in shape? I understand you've been working with, with Magic. How, you staying in shape? Right, uh, when I was in L.A. about three weeks ago, I was working out with Magic, and then uh, I left L.A. and I went home, and I was just playing, running, riding my bike, you know, trying to, uh, you know, keep my wind up. What did you, what, what, let's talk about the Olympic team. What, what did, how did you feel when you heard that you did not make the Olympic team? I was kind of disappointed at first, but, however, uh, Christian Lehner, he's a great player, and, you know, I'm sure he'll do well, and, you know, I just want to wish Coach Daly and the Olympic team good luck. We saw you working out with a mod a while ago, and <laughs> said about that, but while you decide whether or not to sign with the Magic, you're working out with Magic Johnson. What has he taught you about the game? Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate Magic Johnson and his wife Cookie on the beautiful baby that they had. And uh, Magic, you know, he's a great person, great guy. He's kind of like that uh, big brother that I never had, and you know, I learned a lot from him. What sort of impact do you think you can have right off the bat in the NBA? A lot of people are saying you'll be an immediate impact player. Well, uh, I'm just going to come in, take my time, and uh, you know, work hard and try to win. 
Mr. Carroll, thanks a lot for right, coming and joining us. Right, Good luck to you next having... year. All right, Quinn. Okay, looking forward to seeing you playing in the NBA. And by the way, Magic Johnson will rejoin us somewhere along the line here during the stay in Portland. And we'll return with second half action. The Bulls leading the Blazers by nine right after these messages from your local station. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by the companies of the Prudential. In a changing world, one thing remains rock solid, the Prudential. Bradford, do you think people would rather hear me talk or hear you play? Hit it. Tonight Show with Jay Leno, all this week. This game is brought to you in part by your local Ford dealer. You've dreamed about it for years. You've planned every detail. At last, you've made the dream come to life. You've put so much into it. Put Olympic stain on it. It's the protection that keeps your home as beautiful as your dream. Olympic from PPG protects more homes than any other state. PPG salutes the American spirit. Over the past few years, we've been talking about Kmart changing. Well, it's not just talk. We've been re-educating and retraining our associates, and we've been responding to our customers' needs faster than ever before. But for the next few years, every single Kmart store will be just like new. I want to reassure all the people we haven't reached yet that their new Kmart is coming. I want everyone to feel proud about shopping in Kmart. That's my goal. It could be! It is! Holy matrimony! The first draft of anything... Holy ruler! ...is just a rough draft. Holy bat boy! Holy underwear! Holy Now there's new golden draft. It's the only draft beer cold-filtered and cold-finished the Michelob way, so it's smoother than ordinary draft beer. Holy cow! Let me hear you in the garden of Venus, baby! Wouldn't you rather be holding a golden? Back in Portland, as we head to the second half, the Bulls lead the Trailblazers 54 to 45. Ahmad is alongside Portland Trailblazer coach Rick Adelman. All right, Marv, thanks a lot. Rick, not a lot of points in the uh, first half. That's got to concern you. Uh, I'm concerned because of our lack of ball movement. You know, Terry Porter only has five shots in the first half, and the last one of the, of the half was his. But if we don't move the ball better move right now, we're playing in their hands. Their, their pressure bothers us, and we're having a tough time scoring. We have a shot at well, but our ball movement has been non-existent. You've been happy with the intensity of your team so far the first half? No. We, I think uh, early in the game, we were okay. In the last four minutes of the half, we got after them defensively. Uh, we've got to pick it up at that area. That's going to take us into our offense if we do that and if we're going to win this game that's going to have to happen all right thanks a lot rick good luck to you in the second half thank you all right mark all right Ahmad. well only a coach will know and rick uh, candid about the fact that he was not happy with the intensity of his ball club in the uh, latter stage of the second quarter it comes back to one word that he used before game two that's aggressiveness and that takes place at both ends of the floor and what more can you say? They're not doing it the way they need to get it done, and uh, he's letting them know about it, I'm sure, at the half. All right, Chicago led by as many as 15. They have the nine-point lead at halftime. A look at the Miller Genuine Draft halftime statistics. Cliff Robinson struggling one of nine. Blazers only 15 of 38, while the Bulls at 52% from the field. And uh, look at the disparity in the assist column. Scotty Pippen with a well-balanced first half. The Bulls 18 assists. The Blazers with only eight. Blazers with only 15 field goals to show in the first half. We'll be back right after this. He's in Manhattan on Wednesday. Frankfurt on Thursday. Paris, Rome, and Vienna after that. He believes it's better to do business across a table than over a fax machine. This year, he'll fly more than 100,000 miles with us because he knows nobody understands him better than we do. At Delta, when we say we love to fly and it shows, this is where it shows. The last thing the average person wants is the average car. 
That's why the new Mazda brought you the return of the pure sports car, the all-new RX-7. And the return of the Roadster, the Miata. That's why our 929 feels personal. And our MX-6 feels timeless. It's why every Mazda will fulfill its promise in a way no other car can. Ivan the Terrible, convicted of killing hundreds of thousands in Nazi death camps. Now a Dateline investigation reveals they may have the wrong man. Dateline NBC Tuesday. The Bulls and the Blazers ready to go in the third quarter of game three of the best of seven. Scotty Pippen, high man for Chicago with 14 points. The first half for Horace Grant. 13, Michael Jordan, 6 for 10, 12 points, and Clyde Drexler leading the way with 16 for Portland. And if you are Chicago right now, you're very happy with the distribution. 10 players played in the first half for the Bulls, 3 players shared in the shot distribution. 10 shots for Jordan, 9 for Pippen, 8 for Grant. And those 3 guys, by the way, all in double figures. Only one player, Drexler, in double figures for the Trailblazers. Portland shot only 5 of 17 in the second quarter. Duckworth, Kevin Duckworth playing with three fouls, as is Jerome Kersey. Jerome Kersey had an invisible first half. 0 for 2 from the field. They got himself in early foul trouble. Well, these first couple of minutes now are going to be very important for both of these teams. This is a very hot building. The temperature inside is very high. It's a key factor. Concentration factor. As Cartwright eventually knocks down the shot. But the concentration factor coming out of the locker room. It's very humid, very warm, and a tendency here to kind of fade out of it by players that don't really focus in. Pippen got a piece of it. It is unusually warm here, although not the, the case in the, the car is back by the dressing room where you can feel the air conditioning. Lasers turn it over. So it's Chicago ball. They open up with Cartwright, Pippen, and Grant on the front line. Paxson and Jordan in the backcourt. That's the ninth turnover for the Portland Trailblazers. They had nine turnovers all together in game two, counting regulation and overtime. Cartwright rebounded by Jordan, and he was fouled. But Williams and Jerome Kersey converging. Williams called for his third, and again, Michael Jordan comes up hobbling. Well, earlier in the game, he had stepped on Buck Williams' ankle, and now here as he fights for the offensive rebound, again, coming down, and those players on the other team just keep sticking their feet underneath Michael when he goes up. Minute and a half gone by in the third. Grant from Cartwright. And Duckworth off the board. Here's Porter leading Drexler. <laughs> Chicago 56, Portland 49. Jordan for Cartwright did not hold on. Williams. Scotty Pippen with his eighth rebound. The Bulls have led by as many as 15. Portland has had a, a couple of very difficult stretches. At one point, they missed seven straight shots. And then in the second quarter, at one stretch, they managed only two field goals. 15 attempts. Kersey, it's a wild shot. He went to a third option. He felt he was fouled. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. 
Jerome Kersey just trying to find any way to score points to get himself going in the offensive end of the floor for Portland. And Grant calls for the travel. A few moments ago for Portland, the eye contact. Porter knows that Drexler's streaking down the other end of the floor. Then it's a matter of laying it up there, and Ty's going to get it for you. Duckworth gets the new 24. Drexler for three. And Cartwright rebound. Paxson wide open. Drexler for Kersey. A 14-4 run by the Blazers. And Phil Jackson calls for time. The Summer Olympics starts in 48 days on NBC. Sometimes I dream that he is me. You got to see that's how I dream to be. A dream I move. Once in a great while, a car comes along with such timeless beauty, such intrepid performance, you can't help but make predictions. What do you do when you think something is destined to be a collector's item? You put one away for safekeeping. The new MX-6 from the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. Then again, who can wait that long? on NBC is brought to you by the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. And by the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. Well, this is a busy weekend in Portland. The 84th Portland Rose Festival taking place yesterday. No uh, bouquets being tossed in the direction of Bill Cartwright by Phil Jackson, who was upset with his center. I think all he said was, Phil be looking for the basketball, referring back to the pass that Michael Jordan tried to throw him. It was a no-look pass, hit him in the hands, and sometimes the players aren't ready, anticipating that it might come. Phil just trying to remind Big Bill, be a receiver, look for it. Well, the Bulls have hit only one of six from the floor. Here on the third quarter, Blazers on a 14-4 run. Jordan, Michael Jordan is 7 of 11. He has 14. Chicago leads by 7. Four minutes had gone by in this quarter. Jordan had taken no shots, so... Wide Drexler with 20 points on 8 of 11 shooting. It's a 5-point Chicago lead. They have led by as many as 15. Jordan from deep. Shot clock at six. Drexler. Hits the floor hard, but he's all right. Committed by Pippen. That's his second. He's 
sounds and sights of NBA action. Duckworth rolling in. from the field here on the third while the Blazers are coming on. Drexler had it knocked away but he touched it last. Well the fans thought that it was the reach in by Pippen that knocked it away. The officials thought it was the pullback dribble reverse right there by Drexler that lost the ball. Last contact by Drexler. to provide the help. Well, Michael Jordan's average five free throws a game to steal by Chicago. Pippen leading the break. But lost possession. I was saying Michael Jordan's averaging five free throws a game. At halftime, he had no free throw attempt. It's when he takes it to the basket that he gets the opportunity. And a technical foul called on Phil Jackson. Had some rules in the direction of Bill Oaks, who hit him with the tee. get away with with different people on the floor earlier in the game we have referred to the fact that rick adelman told jerome kersey settle down knowing that there are a couple of officials in this crew that have a reputation for giving some quick technical foul so you, you try and make your players aware of it the complaint is right there who did the basketball go off of was it off of pippen was it off of kersey was it a foul no foul phil trying to wonder what's going on the, the technical is being called by Billy Oaks saying he is out of the coaching box. He has crossed over the 28-foot line. The Trailblazers turning it around off a 19-8 run that carries back to the second quarter. They are down by only four. That's over six minutes to go in the third. And now the call against Portland. Offensive foul on Duckworth. That is his fourth. And Cliff Robinson will check back in. Kevin Duckworth sitting down. Nine points for Duckworth. Paxton handling against Porter. Pippen played by Kersey. On right. Over Robinson. Rebounded by Williams. Robinson on the open floor, try to give it back. Recovered by Drexler. Here's Jordan. Wide open basketball. Porter puts the move on. with eight. 
18 points. The Bulls lead 64-58. It's something that if you work at it, you're going to get better at it. Get your techniques down, then go out and do it and spend a lot of time at it. A small forward in the NBA, the three spot as they call it, needs to have the perimeter game to complement the other parts of it. Robinson passing up the shots. He's only one for nine. Drexler to the scoop. Jordan changed his mind, and Grant was fouled by Robinson. Good luck once again by Michael Jordan. Jordan knows where all the players are on the floor, has that peripheral vision, keeps his eyes on the front of the rim, knows right, knows left, elevate, gets a look, and then makes the right decision. Timeout taken by the Blazers. Why can't van doors swing open instead of slide? Why do minivans handle like trucks? Why can't they feel more like a car? This is what the engineers at Mazda wondered when they designed the MPV. Because when you ask better questions, you tend to come up with better answers. Why does your door do that? The MPV from the new Mazda. It does feel like I got a shell and two starfishes. It's called Me Day. My mom says he looks like my daddy's boss. It's the day when everyone in Mrs. Meyer's first grade brings something from home. My daddy cut it for me. And shares it with the rest of the class. Jack, you want to come on up? On this Tuesday morning, Jack Moore brought something different. This is my dad. His name is Jack, like me. Last Saturday, we built a doghouse. Maybe someday I'll get a dog. Every Saturday morning, we let Mom sleep and we go to McDonald's together. That's where we tell each other things we'd never tell anybody else. At McDonald's, we never planned on being part of Jack Moore's Me Day, but we're glad we were. This is my dad. He's my best friend. In the 70s, he thrilled us all in one of the most memorable college basketball championship games ever. In the 80s, this 11-time All-Star led the Celtics to three NBA titles, earning the nickname Larry Legend. Now in the 90s, will Barcelona be his greatest moment? Larry Bird, one to watch this summer on NBC. Well, there's been so much discussion concerning the poor decisions made by Portland in closing minutes of game. Some of it triggered by Phil Jackson's statement when he referred to the Blazers earlier this season regarding their self-destruction tendencies, which led to this cartoon in today's Portland Oregonian. A uh, NBA Finals IQ test. Answer the following question. Test your NBA IQ. Which game two play is the dumb play? The clutch jumper by Duckworth. The overtime three-parter by Terry Porter. Danny Ainge slashing drive. Or D was it? Michael Jordan's momentum swinging technical in the fourth quarter, so they are they are certainly striking back here in Portland. How much time do I have to answer that question? Horace Grant to the free throw line. 336 remaining third quarter, and the Bulls by six. The first time I've quieted you down in two seasons. So I take as much time as you need. Bulls by seven. Pressure being shown here by Chicago. Drexler with the step. And the Blazers turn it over. And here's the two sides of that. The Blazers said, we want them to press us. We're going to attack because we can score against it. But if you turn it over like that, you're playing into Chicago's hands. The hurriedness forced another turnover. And Jordan hit on 
the way up by Drexler. Let's go to Ahmad. All right, Marv, here is my best Willard Scott impression. You've been talking about the heat in here. It is uh, 75 degrees outside, beautiful. The upper level here in this Portland Coliseum is 95 degrees, and at courtside, it's 82 degrees. Yes, we are feeling it. It is sizzling here at the Memorial Coliseum. That was a non-shooting foul called on Drexler. Went, got the position. And he's given the balls a 67-58 lead. Well, the double team came quickly to try and help Ainge out by Portland, but then Chicago Ooh. had their patterns down, their roots down, went to their right spots at work. Very compassionate move oh, by the official Bill Oaks after Ainge lost it out of bounds. He kicked at the ball. It lands in the stands that normally would be a technical foul. Phil Jackson looking, looking for the team. Watch this now. Well, Oaks said, okay, I understand. Phil was upset that a technical was not called. A technical or a delay a game called. One of the two is what Phil Jackson wanted. Ainge told Billy Oaks, look, I was just trying to flip it up to you with my foot. I got a little carried away, a little too much energy right now. Jordan rebounded by Williams. Two twenty left in the third. Portman with the ball down by nine. Drexler for three. Was hit a couple from three-point range. And I, I was watching Buck Williams face that time when the shot went up, and you could almost see Buck say, I was starting to launch him from the outside. Now, you know, let's stay in what we're trying to do here. Stay in the offense, get some movement, and uh, let's try and get the ball down inside a little bit. That one of the uh, Blazer problems in game one in Chicago. Traveling violation. And Michael Jordan points it over towards the Portland bench as if to say, don't let them call the game. You call the basketball game. Don't let them determine where the travel is. Shuffle of the feet by Jordan. Robinson setting the picks and Grant switches off to Drexler. And Pippen called for a hold. That is his third foul. It is a non-shooting foul. Bobby Hansen barreling off the bench to check in, not wasting any time on that, on that dead ball, and he replaces Scotty Pippen. Hansen guarding Ainge. Grant switching to Drexler. Broken up by Jordan. Michael Jordan whipping off to John Paxson. He finds the open Hanson. That was stopped by Robinson. Got a piece of it. Jordan on the recovery. Ten on the shot clock. Hanson is open. Yes, another three for Bobby Hanson. He did it in the third quarter in Chicago on Friday. Think about that. You come off the bench, and all of a sudden, Michael Jordan throws you the basketball the first time. He says, quick, shoot it. You're wide open. So you miss that one, but then Jordan comes back up with the rebound. They wind up swinging it around, and now they say, go ahead, now shoot a three. You're not even warmed up yet, and then you knock it out. An 8-0 run by the Bulls to stop the Portland drive, and Bobby Hansen, who is shooting just under 49% from three-point range, although obviously did not have the, uh, the shot opportunities of, of Reggie Miller or Sleepy Floyd or Percy Hawkins this past year, but he has been an excellent uh, three-point shooter over his career. Go to the foul line. 
from a timeout call to set up a play where they could get the ball down low inside. Whether it's down low to one of your big people or whether it's down low to your six foot seven inch guard, Drexel, it doesn't matter. The fact is that you get to stop the clock and put some points on the board and get away from the perimeter shots which allow Chicago to run out if you're not making and at the half Portland was shooting only 39% so the attention to the inside game taken after the timeout by the Trailblazers. Bill Cartwright just picked up his fourth so he'll be replaced by Scott Williams. Another factor for going down low inside you put fouls on big people. Six points for Cartwright. Drexler, who hit 10 of 10 from the line in game two, has connected on four of four here this evening. 40 seconds to go in the third. Chicago with a 10-point lead. Jordan going left. Rebounded by Buck Williams. Michael has not been able to finish off thus far tonight's game. I'm not sure Michael realized how open he was that time when he got to the rim. Probably felt Clyde was going to try and block it from behind, so didn't extend quite enough on the shot. And that is a travel on Cliff Robinson. When Jordan turns the corner, he's probably saying that Drexler's right behind me trying to block it. Clyde never went for the block. Jordan kept the arm down low on the release rather than extend up high. 17th turnover for Portland. Chicago with, with only nine. A.J. Armstrong has checked back in. Here's Watley on the floor. And now Phil Jackson taking Jordan out of the spot of being a creator, perhaps concerned about the fatigue. In fact, he's not finishing, as he just mentioned, and now that goes to Scotty Pippen to make something happen, whether they give him a screen or isolate and clear the side of the floor. Right now, the isolation. Final seconds of the third. Pippen was stripped. So that's the end of the third quarter. It's the Bull 70, the Blazers 60. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. The dream of a pure sports car has been kept alive by the people who race them. Those who believe in the simple thrill that only comes from driving a lightweight car with a lot of power. A car that car companies no longer made. But now, the new Mazda, the people who brought back the Roadster, announce the return of the pure sports car. The new RX-7. Mazda, it just feels right. It's the Bull. Oh, come on now, come on now. We're all about. Versus the Blazers. In a battle for air supremacy. Ooh. It's the official NBA World Championship video. Relive all the high-flying action and behind-the-scenes drama. Yeah. It's your ticket to the 1992 NBA Finals. To order your copy, write to this address or call 1-800-356-8100. NBC, home of the 92 Summer Olympics. There's never been a performance coupe or a financial coup like this. Your Chicagoland Cadillac dealer invites you to lease a new Eldorado with no down payment for 30 months for only $539 a month. Making the Cadillac Eldorado as adept at handling the balance sheet as it is at handling the road. This is how to fly. It's a nice try, but this is how you fly. Red rock flying, this is flying. This is how to fly. They call that flying wrong. Northwest is flying. Fly Northwest to over 200 destinations in the U.S., Asia, and around the world. Running with the Bulls, a live wrap-up right after the game. This copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. Well, the 
capacity crowd once again urging on the Trailblazers here in Portland. The 84th Portland Rose Festival is underway. Our production staff is so thematic. 500,000 lighting the streets yesterday. We watched the uh, floral parade, the start of 25 days of entertainment and activities in the Portland area. Fourth quarter is underway as Armstrong starts up against Watley. Armstrong and Hanson in the backcourt. Scott Williams with a pretty backdoor feed for Pippen. One of the pressure releases. If you overplay and deny the entry passes to the wings, they'll flash a postman, hit him, and then run backdoor cut. Chicago. Watley got bottled up. Last touch by Hanson. Michael Jordan opening up the bench getting a respite a very low scoring third quarter Chicago with 16 points Portland with 15 the Bulls by 12 with the fadeaway just did get a piece of the rim Portland went to their passing motion game offense the problem with that if you wind up with five or four on the 24 second clock with an Ainge he's not what you would call a real creator off the dribble he winds up having to take a fourth shot Shot clock at five. Pippen. Rebounded by Duckworth. Kevin Duckworth back on the floor playing with four fouls. And Watley turns it over again. Here's Armstrong. There you go. And Rick Adelman is very upset. Edith Watley has had trouble both times into the front court. Yeah, but how do you know your teammate's going to run up behind you and kick the ball out of your hands? We'll be right back. Game four of the NBA Finals, Wednesday night on NBC. Ford Truck, the best ever is. People used to go out on Saturday night and leave their truck at home. Times have changed. Our 92 full-size pickup is still built Ford Tough. But we designed it to be more stylish outside, more comfortable inside. Now, if anything gets left at home, will probably be their car. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. Green. Who wouldn't envy green? Such a versatile color. Summer, winter. Indoors or out, green's a natural. And nobody does green like Dockers. With cold footed men of genuine draft, the world's a very cool place. Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Tonight's fellow Genuine Draft, Genuine Moment takes us back two years ago to the 1990 NBA Finals. Game two, Detroit lost home court advantage that had to travel to Portland for three straight games. Detroit not only regained home court advantage, but they won three straight and their second consecutive title. In recognition of this memorable moment, fellow Genuine Draft will donate $1,000 to the third good marshal scholarship fund. That man, Rick Adelman, very apprehensive about the same occurring here against Portland with three straight at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland after getting the split in Chicago. Cliff Robinson had that shot rejected. He is now one for ten. And Rick Adelman had mentioned to us uh, prior to the game again that he thought the 2-3-2 two, two format of the playoffs really favored the team that has the four games uh, but now it was 1-1. He said, look, bottom line, you have to win four to win the championship. No matter where you do it, just go out and do it, play the game. Scott Williams with the shot clock running down. Well, 
think Rick wants to make too big a deal out of that point because that would not exactly be proper motivation for his ball club. No, some things you just move on, move past because you know you can't do a whole lot about it. That's just the way it is. Chicago has a 14-point lead. Two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. We'll see this. The tip. The steal by Robinson. Tippin was waiting on the sidelines for Cartwright to throw the outlet pass. Bill just couldn't clear it, started to lose his balance and figured rather than go down and be called for the travel, he'll take a shot at trying to kick it out. The travel would have been better, it wouldn't have been an easy score. It's the type of play that could turn things around, and there's an offensive foul. It's on Pippen. That's number four. A charge to Pippen. The offensive foul is called with the elbow as Pippen's going down. Kersey gets in his way, takes away the ability of Pippen to screen down. Pippen gets a little frustrated. As you see, he goes off the floor, frustrated again with Eddie Rush. Outstanding game for Pippen, though. Sitting down after picking up his four, while Jerome Kersey has, has struggled. That matchup has been all Scotty Pippen. Duckworth. By Cartwright, who has four, make it number five. This is the toughest call to me in defending the post. When are you allowed to bump back when the big offensive player is trying to move you back in towards the basket? One guy bumps with his shoulder, the other responds with his chest. One bumps with his shoulder, the other responds with the chest. Tough call. Here they go again. This time, Duckworth able to convert off the face. The Bulls lead 74-64. Those calls are the ones that you have to rely on the judgment and experience of the official. Kersey with the steal. Yeah. And Mike Mathis with a tripping call. It's on Cartwright, so he's fouled out. the sixth foul the coaching staff has time to make a decision as to who they would like to put in the basketball game Phil Jackson trying to decide which would be the best matchup for him at this time of the game and also planning the minutes the trip taking place there as Cartwright sticks out the right foot after Kersey steals it and starts to take off on the fast break and this is the first time all season that Cartwright has fouled out departs with six points seven rebounds Stacy King, who played briefly in the first half, has come on, replacing Cartwright. Duckworth, rebounded by Jordan. They immediately went back to Duckworth against Williams on that matchup, and he had him down low, close to the basket. He just could not convert that time. King, surprised by the pass, but it's deflected out by Portland. For Chicago, you have a tough unit on the floor as far as point productivity and cohesiveness. You got Hanson, who is now on his way out with Pippen coming back in. And I think Phil Jackson saw the same thing. Too many parts that normally aren't in there at critical times together having to perform. King, Hanson, B.J., Williams, too much pressure, so he goes back with his other two main guys. Stacy King going to the bucket. It will be Trailblazer possession. The move doesn't matter. It's finishing that counts. You've got to have people on the floor that finish the plays and put the ball in the basket. Percy played by Pippen. Duckworth now being guarded by King. Percy rebounded by Williams. Pippen getting down. So the ball goes back to Portland. I mentioned earlier, it was a very low-scoring third quarter. Well, it's a NBA final record. A total of only 31 points scored in the third. 16 by Chicago, 15 by Portland. The previous mark, 33 points in a Washington-Seattle NBA championship game. Back in May of 79. Foul committed by Scott Williams. That is... His four. What we can see develop here is the fact that Portland has made the decision they're going to continue to go down low to Duckworth. 
to compensate for that, they're hoping that Chicago will have to double team back down low to get the ball out of Duckworth's hands. Well, when that takes place, now you'll see Porter and Drexler get back behind the three-point line and start knocking down the three-pointers if they're wide open. Morris Grant has come back, replacing Scott Williams. 7.20 to go in this fourth quarter. Here's Duckworth, blocked by Grant. Morris Grant had five blocked shots in game two. On Friday, that's his second tonight. This is the exact same rotation that Grant just did not quite get to at the end of game two when Duckworth knocked out that jump with the tie in regulation time. This time, he anticipated a little bit better, was a little bit closer, was able to get there. Now, Kersey operating against Grant goes right at him. And will go to the line. Best way to go against shot blockers is take the ball and take it in their face. Don't leave that space or distance so that they can elevate and block it. Take it right up into their nose. Close down the amount of distance between the two bodies. Hope to draw the contact. Four fouls apiece on Grant, Pippen, and Scott Williams. Bill Cartwright has already fouled out. Foul rundown for the Blazers. Duckworth is playing with four. Three apiece on Kersey, Buck Williams. Drexler and Robinson. Well, Jerome Kersey hits the two after struggling at the line, and he's brought Portland with an eight. Portland's defense is up now. They're up and extended, out pressuring much more than they had earlier in the game. official Bill Oaks with the call timeout has been taken foul was called on Scott Williams we built this business they came in with their big pumps and stopped the flooding saved my business all I've worked for build this business and people really care it meant a lot to us they lent me the money Without it, Debbie couldn't have started college. We built this business to build your dreams. Introducing the new Ford Taurus and the button. The new Taurus now offers remote radio controls, express down power windows, and better night visibility. Because when it comes to convenience, we push all the right buttons. High performance cars, luxury performance cars. Family cars, light trucks. If you've got the car, Michelin's got the tire. It'll be all right. Okay, it's gonna be fine. Everyone just stay where they are. You gotta stop thinking about this. I couldn't help it. Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. When you want one, there's no stopping the taste. Introducing the new Ford Taurus and the ear. Its new design pleases the eye, but to please the ear, we quieted the engine, the interior, even the air conditioning. So now the idea of driving one will sound even better. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor orders. And by Armorall, there is a fountain of youth and we own the patent. Back in Portland, Marv Albert with the czar of the Telestrator, Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad. That last foul was charged to Buck Williams, not Scott Williams. So Buck Williams has collected his fourth as you check out the foul difficulty. Four piece on Duckworth and Buck Williams. Bill Cartwright has fouled out at four on Pippen, four on Grant, and four on Scott Williams. And a lot of pressure has been placed on Stacey King. They're using him right now to use up time on the clock, to take fouls when necessary, to fight off the assault by Duckworth down low against the basket because what Phil Jackson wants to do is finish up the game with the front line of Williams, Grant, and Pippen. He's got to buy time to get to that point where he can ride those guys out. A.J. Armstrong, an 81% free throw shooter, making his first appearance 
at the line in this series. That was a very big drive by B.J. Armstrong with the score down to eight, the crowd in it. Rather than take a jumper, he took it to the basket, tried to stop the momentum by picking up points at the foul line. And the Bulls are only 11 for 21 at the free throw line. That has hurt. Lasers battling back. They're down by only eight. 6.40 remaining in the fourth quarter. Chicago is led by as many as 15. Here's Brexler with a bad shot. And King gets to it. Armstrong. He had Jordan in front of him, took his eye off the ball and turned it over. Exactly what happened because Michael Jordan was streaking down the right side and BJ anticipating the fact that he could lay it off to him on the bounce pass, took his eye off at the quick outlet pass. Right about here is where he knows Michael's coming. There's where he lifts it because he wanted to pass. And now Phil Jackson sends John Paxson right to the table. Clyde Drexler has missed his last five shots. Got off quickly. Overall, he's eight for 16. And Stacey King gets to the rebound. They see King doing uh, some nice little things out there while he's on the floor trying to buy this time. He comes up with a couple big rebounds, nice outlet pass, the small thing. There's Jordan. Oh. Michael Scott has been off. Duckworth, triple team, pops it out. Porter for three. And a loose ball foul called on Duckworth. And that was one of those three-point opportunities that we talked about. If Duckworth could get the double team and could kick it out, you'd have either Porter or Drexler spotting up. Terry Porter just didn't knock that one out. That number five on Duckworth. Coming in from behind. He tries to throw King out of there to go to the basketball, but King did a very good job of maintaining body contact. Pippen got the step. The Blazers have missed their last six field goal attempts. Brexler for the crossover and was fouled. Foul committed by Short. That is his first. And that is greeted by the Sardonic roar of appreciation. I was just going to ask you, did the crowd think he had five, you know, four or five fouls on him? But no, a very, very basketball smart crowd here in Portland. These people appreciate the game. They know the game. And the fact, they appreciate the play of the visiting team as well as the home team throughout the entire season. I, I would say they are the most compassionate crowd because in the introduction of, of the lineups, uh, they, they applaud the visitors. Very kind. 24 for Drexler. Bulls with a six-point lead. Five minutes remaining in the fourth. Here's Jordan. Michael Jordan with 20. And he's given his club a 76-68 advantage. And that time Michael knew he had turned the corner and made the strong extension in the layup. Duckworth. says Chicago ball. A little bit different from the first half when Jordan turned the corner and short on the layup attempt after he passed Drexler. This time he returns the corner on Buck and now the concentration and explosion and there's the strong extension for the two. Bill Jackson calling for a timeout. 4.44 remaining in the fourth. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. They'll tell you that we're building better cars and creating better ways to buy cars. Like our four new Escort LX models. All are equipped with air conditioning, AM FM stereo, and other great standard features for one low price. Just $10,499. It's an easier, better way to buy. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. This summer, the U.S. Olympic basketball team will make history. The dream team of Jordan, 
Bird, Huey, Robinson, Pippin, Drexler, Mullen, Barkley, and Magic. And there's only one place you can see every minute of every Team USA game live in its entirety with no interruption. The Olympic Triple Cast. Three channels, 15 days, 24 hours a day, all for less than $9 a day. Call 1-800-OLYMPIC to see every minute of every game of the Dream Team. Call 1-800-OLYMPIC to order. He's in Manhattan on Wednesday. Frankfurt on Thursday. Paris, Rome, and Vienna after that. He believes it's better to do business across a table than over a fax machine. This year, he'll fly more than 100,000 miles with us because he knows nobody understands him better than we do. At Delta, when we say we love to fly and it shows, this is where it shows. The game was born in America and dominated by the USA in the Olympics. But recently, that legacy's been challenged. Now, it's about to change. Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, Carl Malone, Magic Johnson, Scotty Pippen, Patrick Ewing, Chris Mullen, David Robinson, John Stockton, Clyde Drexler, and Christian Leitner. The Dream Team, coming this summer to NBC. in Portland, Chicago with an eight-point lead as we wind down to the fourth quarter. In some ways, players are more comfortable on the road as opposed to playing at home, a point that John Paxson made to us last night. No, there's so many distractions when you're home. You, you hit it right on the head. Where you do, you have family coming in. There's tickets to worry about. Uh, when you're on the road, you're all in the same place. You're together. We'll meet tomorrow, you know, all together. We'll watch the film. and. Um, it's, it's always been good for us. We've always responded real well when we've been out on the road and, and able to concentrate. So yeah, I, there, there are definite disadvantages, even though the ones people don't generally see, to, to being at home. When you're at home, what happens is your family, your friends, your well wishes, your supporters, sometimes they don't realize they do more harm than good because they occupy so much of your time. They don't give you a chance to have that peace. And Scotty Pippen cannot get the ball inbound, so quickly call for the timeout take place. So Jackson told his players, you must come back to the basketball. Don't just leave Scotty standing there out of bounds with no outlet. Back to the, uh, the road story for Chicago. They are an excellent ball club, a team that won 67 games during the regular season, and they have the best road record in the league at, at 31 and 10, and you can see since uh, 1990, on the road, clubs like Chicago and Portland have done exceptionally well, but you're talking about the two best teams in the league. And those other teams, by the way, happen to be a couple of teams, Lakers and Pistons, that won a couple of world championships. Yeah. And Detroit, unusual, they fare so well on the road and uh, did not have as an effective a, a home season as they uh, normally do. And we just saw after the timeout, we saw Jackson talking to Grant in the timeout. Grant was the outlet pass to get the ball inbound. Michael Jordan. Rebound, Stacey King. King with the box out. He was being played by Porter, who was caught on a switch. Porter was supposed to rotate down from out high and try to cut off King. He never quite got there in time, could not get inside the big body of King. Same situation as Friday night in Chicago. As we come up on four minutes, a 10-point lead for the Bulls. On Friday night, Portland able to turn it around and come from 10 down to pull it out in overtime. When you're 10 down, you don't want to take a wild and crazy shot like Kersey just wound up taking. Be patient, take your time, get a good shot. Stacey King did not like that hard hit from Jerome Kersey. And the foul was called on Kevin Duckworth, so he is fouled out. Sometimes when you're frustrated as a player, you're not getting your shots to go down, you're trying to find a way to score, you get out of what you need to do to try and get back in the basketball game with four minutes remaining and a 10-point score. This Portland team knows they did it the other night that they can still win a basketball game, but you have to get high percentage shots, good shots at the basket. And Danny Ainge, the man who helped rescue the Trailblazers in game two, has checked in. Stacey King, a 75% free throw shooter and you now have three three-point shooters on the floor for the portland trailblazers 
So if Chicago decides to go back and double down low with some ball movement, you have a chance to pick up some extra points with three-point shots if that's the way you want to go. Stacy King coming on for Bill Cartwright, who had fouled out, has done a nice job. Chicago and Portland each have three timeouts remaining. They've used their 20s. Ames for three. And he was open. Rebound comes to Kersey. The Bulls by 10 with three and a half remaining in the fourth. Game three of the best of seven. The series tied at one. Game four here. In Portland on Wednesday. We'll have it for you on NBC starting at 9 Eastern time, 6 o'clock on the Pacific Coast. And Stacy King, who is a strong post-up player, able to hit his third field goal. He has eight points. You let Stacy King get that low on the right block. And a steal by Paxson as he stepped up in the passing lane. John Paxson with the steal, providing a 14-point Chicago lead, and Rick Adelman takes a timeout. Shooting the passing lane, normally associated with Pippen or Jordan. This time it happens to be John Paxson who makes the big defensive play for the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls with a 10 2 run. Come on, come on, let me show you where it's at. With smooth, refreshing taste and fewer calories than other lights, it's no wonder Miller Lite's everything you want a beer to be. Miller Lite, it's that bad. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. Ask them about quality. It's one of the biggest reasons five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. The F-Series Pickup, Taurus, Explorer, Escort, and Ranger. Five out of ten of the country's best sellers. It's quality that breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. I'm paid to buy the high volume copiers. I don't want to have to worry about them. The corporate line from Canon. If our copiers are working, our people are working. Reliable high volume copiers you don't have to think about. The corporate line from Canon. The new power in high volume copying. a spark plug that's tested to fire clean for 30,000 miles. Motorcraft. Motorcraft quality parts. From Ford. Come on, come on. Let me show you what it's at. Brewed from the start to be a great tasting beer. Not a watered down version of something else. Miller Lite. It's everything you want a beer to be. Miller Lite. Jackson has sent Scott Williams to the table to replace Stacy King, but happenstance has it that the ball winds up going into King, who makes this nice low post move. If you let him to the middle with his left hand and this close to the rim, he's going to produce. So when he winds up going over to the bench, who's the happiest guy there? The guy that was supposed to go in and take his place? Scott Williams comes over to congratulate Stacy King. At the start of the season, Stacy King was the starter at center with Bill Cartwright out with that broken left hand, and he had some strong games. Will that count? Yes, it does. It's a goal to... No, wait a moment. One official said yes, and the other said no. It is just a foul. It is waved off. The foul committed by Jordan. And the Trailblazers wanted the ball because the ball hit the backboard, but you can block it to the backboard. You're allowed to do that. If it's on the glass and you touch it, no good. But there, the ball was blocked into the glass. The ball is 84. And the Trailblazers, 71, with 247 remaining in this fourth quarter. So, no goal tending. Drexler hitting both foul shots. Twenty-six points. Chicago with a 12-point lead. The little half-court trap trying to make Chicago taste, take a force or hurried shot, but too much force by Max at that time. And Jordan was hit. Michael Jordan to the line for the first time tonight. Rexler called for his fourth. 
And while we have an opportunity here with Michael Jordan going to the line, we'd like to wish our NBC Sports colleague, Bill Parcells, the very best Bill recovery from heart bypass surgery. And we're told coming along very well, Bill, as you know, is our an avid basketball fan, although he did tell me privately that you have been getting on his nerves. He also told me, by the way, that he has stumped you quite a few times in trivia questions dealing with NBA players, statistics, past games, Goes back to uh, his early 50s. Uh, after that, there seems to be a block in his head. It all comes out as football for some reason. The steal by Paxson. And last touch by the Trailblazers. Ball knocked out of bounds. You cannot get careless against this Chicago team. One hand on the ball inbounds. If you put one hand on the basketball when you're passing it in, if you try to bring it back, it's very hard to draw it back again. 2.25 remaining in this fourth quarter. And the ball's playing with the clock a bit. Action for three. there between Jordan and Buck Williams goes back to the last time down the floor for Chicago when Jordan penetrated to the basket and passed off while he was in the air Buck gave him a nice little shot a little message uh, reminding him don't come down here driving the lane trying to get in my territory here's the penetration on the pass off after it bang right there Michael didn't appreciate that one too much Mike you look back to what took place Friday night in Chicago with Portland coming from 10 down. Unbelievably, they scored on 16 of their last 17 possessions. Tex Winter, the assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls, charts possessions for the other team, and uh, that is uh, obviously a very, very high statistic. Shot clock at five. Down to three. Here's Jordan. Thought he had a move on the open floor, but Paxson got back. Excellent job of transition defense by Chicago. Drexler. So the Bulls now lead 86-76 with a minute 24 remaining. And the fourth quarter, Clyde Drexler has 30. He is the high man. And once again, they, they spread it out. Well, Scott Williams and Michael Jordan learning the, the spread of the uh, four corners from Dean Smith at North Carolina. Grant wide open. Jerome Kersey just left his man, ran across the floor, extended all the way out, 22, 24 feet from the basket, the double team. Nobody rotated to protect the rim. Timeout called by the Blazers with a minute six to go. Four-star lighting wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Trefethen Vineyards was having trouble getting long-distance calls through on the first try. So they've come back to AT&T, and we want you back. Come back with AT&T Partners in Business. AT&T Quality and 20% discounts to the 20 AT&T numbers you choose or the area code you call most. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. If you thought Banana George Blair had found the fountain of youth... I'm 77 and still barefooty. You'd be half right, because the one he's found is actually for his car. With a little armor all protectant, George restores the beauty of his dashboard and seats. And in minutes, it helps protect his tires from fading and aging. It keeps my car looking almost as good as me. There is a fountain of youth, and we own the patent. Armor all. I hope my feet don't fall out. They come together to compete. Every day, they challenge their limitations. Striving for excellence, they find what is special in sports and in themselves. Join the NBA in supporting all Olympic athletes. They're special. 
For five years, she was the world's greatest female athlete. But last summer at the World Championships, Jackie joyner Kersey met defeat. A pulled hamstring forced her from her premier event, the heptathlon. Now the challenge comes from within as she fights to regain the top spot in the world. Jackie joyner Kersey won to watch this summer on NBC. Marvin, Mike, you guys have been talking about the Trailblazers shooting percentages the entire time, the whole second half. Rick Adelman has been telling his team about shot selection, poor shot selection, taking the wrong shots at the wrong time. Mark? Right, Amal, that's certainly the case in, in game number one, which ended up in a blowout for Chicago. Here's Porter, rebounded by Percy, and the Portland shooting tonight has been very poor. A couple occasions they missed seven in a row. They see 36 percent for the game. The Bulls at 47. Buck Williams called for his fifth. Now Portland scored 26 points in the first quarter. Since then, second quarter, 19. Third quarter, an NBA final record low with the two teams combining for 31 points. Portland had 15. Fourth quarter, the Blazers have managed only 16 points. So, on a night that has seen Michael Jordan have just an ordinary performance, the Bulls have gotten help from other quarters. Scottie Pippen, 18 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. Horace Grant, 18 points, 8 rebounds. Stacey King off the bench, 8 points, did a nice job. Same for Scott Williams, who once again contributed. 45 seconds remaining of the fourth quarter. Drexler is fouled. Michael Jordan is fouled. Foul committed by Jordan. And who knows, as Paxson mentioned before about playing on the road versus at home, here the Trailblazer team, they were away, okay, quite a few days from home in Chicago playing the first two games. Suddenly they come home, land at 3.15, 3.30 in the morning after winning game number two. Basically only have a very short number of hours before they have to return to play the game three here this afternoon. And a lot of catching up to do, a lot of people making phone calls. Did it break concentration? Did, did it have an effect emotionally on them being ready for this game? Don't you know? think that's yeah, that's a reach there. It's rationalizing after after the fight. Something you might tell one of your ball clubs after a loss. We're down to a <laughs> half minute remaining in this fourth quarter, and the Bulls lead by 12. I'm glad to know you got a little chuckle out of yes, you know. And Pippen will throw in. So many things are said after games are lost. Jordan! Michael Jordan. What it comes down to is Chicago severely outplayed Portland tonight. And they now lead 92-78. Ainge. A home by Kersey. So the Bulls lead by 12. Back to Portland. Crowd enjoyed that turnover. The Chicago Bulls on their way to going up two games to one in this best of seven with game number four Wednesday night here in Portland. Rebounded by Buck Williams. Eight. 82. Seven seconds remaining. Paxson was checked by Kersey. So John Paxson to the free throw line. Wednesday night, game number four, 9 o'clock Eastern time on NBC, 6 o'clock on the West Coast. Chicago and Portland. So the Bulls... Although, as we mentioned earlier, appear to be emotionally down, very upset about letting game two slip away, able to bounce back in very solid fashion here tonight. 94-82. As Ainge works his way down. And that will do it. The Chicago Bulls have defeated the Portland Trail.
Trailblazers by the score of 94-84. Portland shot only 26 of 78, 36% from the field. Well, shot selection is one of the things that not too many turnovers forced by the Trailblazer defense. Those opportunities enable them to get out in the open floor and then do their transition game thing, which is one of their strong points for this basketball team. Mike Drexler, the high point man of the game, with 32. Michael Jordan had 26, 18 apiece for Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant. Again, the final, Chicago 94, Portland 84. Join us Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, for game four, with the Bulls up now two games to one. Coming up next, find out why everybody's watching Seinfeld, followed by Night Court and Dear John. For Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, Bob Costas, Quinn Buckner, I'm Marv Albert. This has been a presentation of the NBA on NBC. Ignore fair.